Roadrunner is a collaboration between IBM and the Los Alamos National Laboratory, and it will produce the largest supercomputer ever, 1.5 petaflops, three times faster than the current larger system. It's a hybrid architecture that will allow science at scale that has never been allowed before. The Roadrunner project at Los Alamos is really the first significant manifestation of what we call hybrid computing. At its center are very conventional kinds of microprocessors from AMD, the kinds of microprocessors that you'll find in laptops and servers. But surrounding this are a large number of chips known as a cell broadband engine, the same kind of chip that you find in the Sony PlayStation 3. These two technologies in combination are what really bring this magnitude of compute power into play in the Roadrunner project. It is a new technology. It didn't exist before this contract. Uh, many of the technology components existed, the cell microprocessor, but many of the um, components that make up the system were assembled for this system, and we hope that they will be more broadly used uh, within uh, the industry. Now, a rack holds the equivalent of a thousand of your PCs. When we construct the whole machine, there are 300 of these racks all put together. But what's more interesting, is that we have jointly put those AMD chips and the cell broadband engines into the same package, into the same architecture, as something that hasn't been done. Probably for the first time, uh, Roadrunner will be large enough to run some multi-scale science uh, simulations. So these have been talked about for, for a number of years in the high performance computing industry, but with Roadrunner we will have a machine that will be able to, to do this these multi-scale simulations. Roadrunner lets us scale in a power and space efficient way to scales that people haven't gone to. And so what's needed now is visualization at scales that can, can match those. And so the broadband engine, because it is so good at doing visualization, allows new algorithms so that we can render the answers so people can see what it is they just simulated in ways they couldn't. And so the output of a supercomputer is something familiar to anybody who uses a computer. It's going to produce strings of numbers. And the trick is, how do you interpret this? And so visualization becomes a critical element that one has to append to supercomputing as a vehicle to provide insight into the kinds of analyses being performed. Visualization is the ability to actually show in still pictures, three-dimensional images, motion pictures, the results of experiments that have been run on the supercomputer. The cell broadband engine is used as an accelerator to a conventional processor like an Opteron in the Roadrunner project. Um, one of the acceleration tasks is scientific visualization, the way you see or visualize the data. This is a Boeing 777 aircraft. The way Boeing visualized it is they would visualize it part by part, but these parts are designed all over the world, and they had no way of visualizing the entire aircraft in one setting. So what you're seeing here is all of those mechanical CAD diagrams being integrated into one model. It's hard for us to imagine how much cost savings this would mean to Boeing, but you can look at the cost savings with the interference checking, um, being able to find problems on the manufacturing floor before they actually occur, and this is a huge learning tool for people that are dealing with this aircraft over its 30-year lifespan. Businesses are picking up on what high-performance computing can do for them. So you see that going into pharmaceuticals. We are now simulating what drugs can do in the body. Uh, you also find it in medical imaging. And we're finding that the banks and the people on Wall Street are actually now very excited about high-performance computing because they can simulate what might happen with the markets. It's a highly environmentally friendly system by virtue of its efficient use of power for operation and cooling. It's highly affordable by virtue of using commodity microprocessors and processors that come out of the gaming industry. And as a result, we expect this technology to cascade into general commercial use over the course of time.